In our previous presentation, we learned how to solve the recurrence relation of time using substitution method. Now in this lecture, we will learn how to solve recurrence relation of return value using substitution method. So let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics. The first topic of this lecture is writing the recurrence relation of return value. First, we will learn how to write the recurrence relation of return value. And then we will learn how to solve the recurrence relation using substitution method. Let's start with the first topic, writing the recurrence relation of return value. We learned how to write the recurrence relation of time. And we also learned how to solve the recurrence relation of time using substitution method in our previous lectures. Now we are interested in writing the recurrence relation of return value of factorial of n. So let's take the same algorithm, factorial of n. We know if n is 1, then 1 will be returned from fact of n. Otherwise, n times fact of n minus 1 will be returned. We cannot just write the recurrence relation of time. We can also write the recurrence relation of return value of this algorithm. We already learned how to write the recurrence relation of time of this algorithm. Now, let's write the recurrence relation of return value of this algorithm. We already learned what is recurrence relation. Recall that a recurrence relation is a mathematical expression that describes the cost of the overall problem in terms of the cost of the smaller subproblems. In this case, we are interested in return value, hence the cost is return value. So we need to represent the return value of fact of n, which is the overall problem, in terms of the cost, or we can say the return value of the smaller subproblems. These are the smaller subproblems. We will now represent the return value of fact of n in terms of the return values of these smaller subproblems. Let's see how to do this. Let's say the return value of fact of n is represented by Rn. So Rn is the return value of fact of n. Now what about this base case? We know this base case is satisfied when n is equal to 1. This means we are considering fact of 1. We know the return value of fact of n is Rn. Therefore, the return value of fact of 1 must be R1. And if R1 is there, this means if n is equal to 1, then 1 will be returned from the function. This means the return value must be equal to 1. And hence, R of 1 must be equal to 1. We need to write the exact return value here. Return value of the base case is 1. Therefore, we must write 1 here. If it is 2, then we will write 2. If it is 5, we will write 5. I hope you got the idea. So, we need to write the exact return value because we are interested in writing the recurrence relation of return value. Now we know what is the return value of the base case. Let's move to the recursive case and let's try to write the return value in terms of R for this recursive case. Here we have the else block and within this else block we have return n times fact of n minus 1. Now, how do we represent fact of n minus 1 in terms of R? We know Rn represents the return value of fact of n. Therefore, R of n minus 1 must represent the return value of fact of n minus 1. So, one thing is clear that we can write R of n minus 1 and we can multiply it by n and this will be the overall return value as we can observe here. We are returning n times fact of n minus 1. This means we are returning R of n minus 1 times n because r of n minus 1 represents the return value of fact of n minus 1 and we need to multiply it by n as it is indicated over here. So, this must be the return value r of n minus 1 times n. So, one thing is clear that if n is equal to 1, then r of n is equal to 1. If n is greater than 1, 
then r of n must be equal to r of n minus 1 times n. Now we can easily write the recurrence relation. The recurrence relation must be rn equal to rn minus 1 times n if n is greater than 1. Otherwise, if n is equal to 1, then rn is equal to 1. This is the way we write the recurrence relation. Please keep this in mind. Rn has two possibilities. If n is greater than 1, then Rn is Rn minus 1 times n. If n is equal to 1, then Rn is 1. So, I hope this idea is clear. We now have the recurrence relation of return value of this big problem. We have represented the return value of fact of n in terms of the return value of the smaller subproblems. This is what we can observe here. So, we have written our recurrence relation. This is what we learned in the definition of the recurrence relation. Now, as we have written the recurrence relation of return value of this algorithm, let's move to the next topic where we will discuss how to solve the recurrence relation which we have obtained using substitution method. We know this is the recurrence relation so obtained. R of n is equal to R of n minus 1 times n if n is greater than 1. Otherwise, if n is equal to 1, then R of n is equal to 1. This represents the base case and this is the recursive case. Now, let's solve this recurrence relation using substitution method. Substitution method is easy to follow. We need to write the recursive case first, which is r of n equal to r of n minus 1 times n. Now, we can substitute r of n minus 1 by r of n minus 2 times n minus 1. Why? You can replace n by n minus 1. You will get r of n minus 1 in the left hand side, and in the right hand side, you will get r of n minus 2 because n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. So, we will get r of n minus 2 times n minus 1. This n will be replaced by n minus 1. So, we can substitute r of n minus 1 by r of n minus 2 times n minus 1. So, what we will get? The new r of n is equal to r of n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n. I have written this part as it is. This represents r of n minus 1 and this is the new r of n. Now, we can write this as r of n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n. This is the expression so obtained. So, I have written r of n in terms of r of n minus 2. This is how the substitution method works. Now, we can proceed and substitute r of n minus 2 by r of n minus 3 times n minus 2. If we replace n by n minus 2, we will get r of n minus 2 equal to r of n minus 3 because n minus 2 minus 1 is n minus 3. So, we will get r of n minus 3 here times n minus 2 because n will be replaced by n minus 2. So, r of n minus 2 is equal to r of n minus 3 times n minus 2. So, new r n is r of n minus 3 times n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n. We can remove these brackets and this is the expression so obtained. So, now I have represented r of n in terms of r of n minus 3. Now, we can observe a pattern here. Here we have r of n minus 1 times n. Here we have r of n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n. When we have r of n minus 3 here, then we have n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n here. So, as we proceed in this way, we can continue up to r of n minus k like this. And here we can observe that if we have 3 here, then we have 2, 1 and 0 here. If we have 2 here, then we have 1, 0 here. So, clearly the constants are decremented by 1. The next value after r of n minus 3 is n minus 2. Here we have r of n minus k. So, the next value must be n minus k minus 1. Then 
After this, we must have n minus k minus 2. And in this way, we can continue up to n. So, this is the expression so obtained. We have generalized r of n like this. As we have observed the pattern here, we can easily write this generalized expression. Now, r of n is equal to r of n minus k times n minus k minus 1 times n minus k minus 2 times and so on up to n. Now, we know r n represents the return value of fact of n, r n minus 1 represents the return value of fact of n minus 1, r n minus 2 represents the return value of fact of n minus 2. So, we can say r of n minus k represents the return value of fact of n minus k. Now, let's assume fact of n minus k is the last recursive call and hence the base case must be satisfied. What was the base case? If n is equal to 1, then return 1. This is the base case of factorial of n algorithm. And from the recurrence relation also, it is clear that Rn is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1. This is the base case. If n is 1, then return 1. And this means this is the return value when the base case is satisfied. And as I am assuming that fact of n minus k is the last recursive call, therefore n minus k must be equal to 1, then only the base case will be satisfied. Because if n is equal to 1, then only 1 will be returned and this means base case is satisfied. Please note that here we have r of n minus k. So, in place of n, we have n minus k. Therefore, n minus k must be equal to 1 in order to satisfy the base case. Hence, we need to assume that n minus k is equal to 1 and from this we can obtain the value of k which is equal to n minus 1. Now, we can replace k by n minus 1 in this expression. We will get r of n minus n minus 1 times n minus n minus 1 minus 1 times n minus n minus 1 minus 2 and so on up to n. Here we have n minus 1 within parentheses. After opening the parentheses, we will get n minus n plus 1 and this is equal to 1. So, we will get r of 1 here and we know what is the value of r1. If n is equal to 1, then r1 is equal to 1. So, r1 can be replaced by 1. Here we will get r of 1. What about this expression? Here we have n minus within parentheses n minus 1 minus 1. n minus 1 minus 1 is equal to n minus 2. And after opening the parentheses, we will get n minus n plus 2. n minus n plus 2 is equal to 2. So, we will get 2 here. What about this specific expression? Here we have n minus within parentheses n minus 1 minus 2. This is equal to 3. So, we are getting this expression r1 times 2 times 3 times up to n. What is r1? We know r1 is equal to 1. Therefore, we can replace r1 by 1 and this is the expression so obtained. And we know what is the value of this expression. This is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on up to 1. This is equal to n factorial. So, rn is equal to n factorial. We know rn represents the return value of fact of n. So, the return value of fact of n is n factorial, which is correct because the algorithm is capable of calculating the factorial of n. And hence, the return value must be factorial of n and that is what we are getting here as well. So, this proves that the algorithm is capable of returning n factorial. Through this recurrence relation, we have obtained this final result. And we have used the substitution method to do this. In the substitution method, we always need to observe the pattern and accordingly we need to write the generalized expression. After writing the generalized expression, we need to solve it. Like in this case, we are assuming r of n minus k is the return value of the last function call. This assumption is important. As we are assuming this belongs to the last function call, 
therefore the base case must be satisfied and because of this assumption n minus k becomes equal to 1 and from this equation we can obtain the value of k and then we can replace the value of k everywhere in this expression. This will help solving this expression and in this way we can obtain the final result. So this is how the substitution method works. So with this I hope it is clear how to solve the recurrence relation of return value of factorial of n using substitution method. This means we are done with the second topic and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.